This is Dan Joseph with the China Learning Curve. If you haven't watched our Funniest China Story Ever video, please do so. It helps illustrate how we use practical examples and stories to make China interesting, engaging, and entertaining for any audience. The purpose of this video is to describe the rather unique approach we take to addressing business issues in China. The key point to make here is that we start with the basics, how China is different, or what we call the differences in China's local conditions, the most important of which are China's culture, economic structure and business environment. We start with these topics because you really have to understand these issues before moving on to next level challenges like how to build a strategy for China or how to manage well in China. I should also say that while topics like culture and economic structure might sound kind of theoretical and boring, we present them with examples and a real world perspective that not only makes them tangible and relatable, but also makes for an engaging and entertaining experience for the audience. I'm sure most of you have heard of Deng Xiaoping. You probably heard he's noted for a lot of pithy sayings like uh, to get rich is glorious. This is the most important pithy saying ever attributed to Deng Xiaoping. Some people wonder whether he ever really said it, which is shirto guohe, to feel the stones as you cross the river. The point is you don't have to have an exact plan. Okay? What you need to know is the direction you're going in, and then you take one step at a time, make sure that's a secure step. You take another step, make sure that's a secure step, and you keep going. Okay, and that gradual approach to liberalization has what has characterized China since it started in 1980. But what's important, particularly for doing business and for understanding China overall, is to know that the, soup, the, the differences on the surface are a result of differences underneath in China's economic structure, its business environment, and its culture. And if you want to be part of the, the growth on the top, you have to understand these things on the bottom. The first point I like to make to people is China is still relatively poor. People lose sight of this. It's so big. And its impact is already so huge that people get a little bit carried away. I would argue that Home Depot got a little carried away with how wealthy China really is. I'm driving him back to the, the hotel out by the airport, so you go through some suburban streets. It's dark, nobody's on the road, and I'm stopping at each stop sign. And he finally says to me, do all Americans drive this way? <laughs> and I said, yeah, pretty much. He said, no one does this in China. You know, no one would stop at these stop signs if there's no other car on the road. But I love to point this out because when you're studying foreign cultures and you're studying you know, economics and things, nobody mentions following traffic rules as being important. If anything, it's just a funny story you tell. The UN actually has a program designed to decrease traffic fatalities around the world. In middle-income countries, on a per-vehicle basis, traffic fatalities are 10 times more common. In lower incomes, the lower, like some of the countries in Africa and whatnot, it's 80 times. Okay, 80 times. On a per vehicle basis, traffic fatalities tend to 80 times higher. In those clips, you might have noticed that I address some topics that are a bit unusual. I think that's a key advantage of what I do. I focus on issues that are critical, but not necessarily obvious. Topics that most people have never heard discussed before. Anyway. After explaining the critical differences relative to China, I then provide advice and guidance as to how businesses can navigate through and adapt to those differences in order to succeed in China. Strategy and management are the topics I address most often because they are the most important and challenging issues in China and they are also relevant to all businesses. Not only are the differences subtle, but the adjustments that you have to make are subtle. What I'm not saying is you have to learn a completely new way of doing business to do business in China. It's not like all of a sudden you have to do lean manufacturing. I like to do the analogy with golf. We probably have some golfers in the room. I don't happen to be a golfer. But when you golf, a professional golfer, Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, whomever, they're going to take the same clubs to every course, right? And they're going to swing basically the same way. But you always play a few practice rounds. And you have to know how the course is playing. You have to know whether you lay up or go for the hole. Do you play left or right of the pin? Which traps to avoid? And very often the difference between victory and defeat is playing the local con the, the conditions of that course the right way. And that's what you really have to do in China is make some subtle, simple adjustments and keep yourself out of trouble. Amer they like our technology, but they've seen too many American companies come into the market, not commit the right resources, not hire the right people, and screw up. So they tend to be skeptical. Very often you'll find in the industrial space where Chinese will say, look, we're, we've done a little bit of business with you. We're not doing more until you put more people over here. You know, I love this quote from Jack Ma, CEO of Alibaba. <coughs> eBay may be a shark in the ocean, but I'm a crocodile in the Yangtze River. If we fight in the ocean, we lose. But if we fight in the river, we win. Well, three years after eBay went into China, they, uh, they retreated. Jack Ma realized that China is a low trust society because of the rule of law problem. Okay? People don't trust each other. They don't want to pay people they don't know. So Jack Ma and Alibaba sets up a system whereby when you buy something off of their auction site, 
um, you don't pay the person directly. You put money in escrow with Alibaba. And I've actually done this. Someone, I bought something electronic when I was in China. They bring it to your, and you're not buying it from Alibaba, you're buying it from someone else. But when they bring it to your house, the guy said, can you turn it on and check it out? And I used it. And he said, is it okay? Can I release the money? And I said, yes. It's more than anything else, that simple fact probably drove eBay out of China because they didn't do that. People have a tough time describing Alibaba's business model. It's part Amazon, part this. The fact is, Amazon's business, or Alibaba's business model is largely based on that trust factor. It would be hard to do an Alibaba here because every individual store puts up its own site. I should also mention that, although I often focus on strategy and management, I address other topics as well. While I'm a China specialist, I'm also a business generalist, having held a broad variety of positions in a variety of industries, which gives me the ability to address quite a few specific functional issues like supply chain, manufacturing, recruiting, banking, or finance, depending on what might be important to a particular audience. For more information on my speaking, please see these other videos. And for more information on how we can tailor a program to your organization, please contact us at this email address. Thanks.